It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 1907, Eight Little Ways to Simplify Your Life, by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you with permission from the authors. I cover lots of topics like personal development or self-help, mindfulness, happiness, anything that I think can help you live a more meaningful life in just a few minutes every day. I should probably mention that it's my birthday today. No days off here. If you're in the giving spirit, just sharing the show with somebody would make my day. I'd greatly appreciate it. But I don't want to delay too much, so let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Eight Little Ways to Simplify Your Life by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com Simplicity isn't always easy. If you're considering or in the midst of a big project to simplify your life, like downsizing or paying off your debt, it might feel like there is no end in sight. Even though these big changes will add tremendous value to your life, the little changes are just as important. Not only do they encourage the big changes, but they are meaningful all on their own. Little changes can be accomplished quickly, which adds fuel to your simplicity fire. By making a list of five to 10 little things and knocking them out, you'll build momentum and inspiration for the big stuff. You'll also create more time and space so you can more thoughtfully approach the other ways you'd like to simplify and live your life. Identify little changes as things you can complete in an hour or less. Use this list, make your own, or mix and match. Number one, negotiate holiday gift giving. If you're attempting to own less or pay off debt, the holidays and traditional gift giving may cause some anxiety and complicate things. Craft an email, give a one less gift certificate, or call your friends and family and see if they would be open to a new way to enjoy the holidays. Don't make the focus about the changes you want to make in your life, but rather the impact giving differently may have on your relationships and the way you experience the holiday season. For people who live close by, create an experience together in lieu of gifts. For people who live far away, collaborate to give back and create a campaign for the hope effect. For others, simply agree to exchange well wishes or big hugs. Number two, commit to a weekly media fast. The news, Facebook updates, and other media can feel overwhelming. Take a break for 24 hours a week to be free of the onslaught of incoming information. Number three, clear up a misunderstanding. If your mind has been occupied by an uncomfortable conversation, argument, or misunderstanding, make a phone call. You don't have to come to a resolution or ever completely agree on the disagreement. It's usually enough to agree that you really like each other and want the weirdness to go away. Don't wait. Number four, schedule a solo date. When was the last time you took yourself out to lunch, for a walk through a museum, or to explore a new neighborhood? Author Julia Cameron calls this an artist's date. She says, quote, the artist date is a once-weekly festive solo expedition to explore something that interests you. The artist date need not be overtly artistic. Think mischief more than mastery. Artist dates fire up the imagination. They spark whimsy. They encourage play. When choosing an artist date, it is good to ask yourself what sounds fun and then allow yourself to try it, end quote. Number five, take a forest bath. I discovered the idea of a forest bath in Jonathan Field's new book, How to Live a Good Life. The Japanese phrase for forest bath is shinrin-yoku, and Field shares that forest bathers experience tremendous health benefits, quote, increased happiness and pleasure, improved sleep and energy, and a calmer, more relaxed state of mind, end quote. Good health makes everything simpler. Just getting outside and into nature will help. For added benefit, notice your surroundings with wonder and gratitude, even if you've seen them a thousand times before. If you can't get into a forest, add plans to your living and workspaces. It makes a difference. Number six, write down all the things. Get it off your mind and onto paper. Don't worry about where to put the commas or censor yourself in any way. Calm your frantic mind and ease a worried heart just by writing what you are thinking. You'll be surprised how seeing your thoughts in writing puts them in perspective and provides clarity on what to do next. It might lead to a better night of sleep too. Number seven, engage in a rapid fire decluttering session. Decluttering a whole home takes time, but you'll be surprised how much you can accomplish in a small amount of time. 
Set your timer for 10 to 30 minutes, turn on your favorite music, and go. Fill up a box or bag with stuff you don't use or enjoy. And number eight, boycott busyness. Take the busy boycott challenge and trade your busy life for a full one. There's a big difference between a busy and full life. A busy life distracts us from what we really care about and who we really care about. A busy life is all about piling it on, catching up, falling behind, and waking up tired to do it all over again. A full life invites us to engage in what we really care about and spend time with who we really care about. A full life isn't about doing it all, but falling asleep at the end of the day content with how you spent your minutes and hours and a pleasant anticipation of the day to come. You just listened to the post titled Eight Little Ways to Simplify Your Life by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com. And now 2020 was the year of many things, but we're in a new year now. And if you own a small business, why not start it off right with better payroll? Gusto wasn't just built for small businesses, it was built for the people behind them. Their online payroll is so easy to use. Gusto can automatically calculate paychecks and file all your payroll taxes, which means you have more time to run your business. Plus, Gusto does way more than payroll. Gusto helps with time tracking, health insurance, 401ks, onboarding, commuter benefits, offer letters, access to HR experts. You get the idea. Super easy to get set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, they can transfer all your data for you. It's no surprise 94% of customers are likely to recommend Gusto. And we do here at the OLD team. We've been using Gusto for years. They've been handling many aspects of our business. And here's the best part. Because you're a listener, you get three months totally free. All you have to do is go to gusto.com slash old. Again, that's gusto.com slash OLD. I'm telling you, you're gonna love Gusto. Get started today. G-U-S-T-O dot com slash OLD. Thank you to Courtney. Just like yesterday, I'd recommend only picking one of these instead of trying all of them quickly and having none of them stick over the long term. For me, writing things down without worrying about punctuation or grammar does help a lot. I learned this method in college, I think in anthropology class, where the professor said that for around five minutes, we're gonna write everything that enters into our brain and we have to keep writing. The pen can't stop moving. Even if it means writing, I don't know what to say over and over again. Just keep writing. And the results were pretty surprising. First of all, it was rare that I didn't know what to say because the mind is always moving from one thing to the next. It would be like, hmm, this is a weird assignment. Why are we being asked to continue to write without lifting up our pens? This is kind of hurting my hand now. How long has it been? I'm hungry. The pen just kept going. But what I found is that if you're not in the best of moods, this is a great way to let it all out. Let the brain get it out on paper and then you stop stewing in these thoughts afterwards. It works for me, so if you haven't tried it, I'd recommend it. And if you're into journaling, our Optimal Living Daily Workbook is available. It's another thing you can try. We picked around 100 episodes from this podcast that we loved and then turned those into journal entries and put them into a hardcover workbook. Grabbing one of those would be also a nice birthday present for me because I still have a bunch in my mom's garage and would like to minimize the collection. You can get one or more at oldpodcast.com slash shop. The packaging is really nice. It makes for a great gift. Speaking of birthdays, it's got a ribbon around it and everything. Again, that's oldpodcast.com slash shop. I'll leave it there for today. Thank you for being here on my birthday. I'll be curating articles for you here again tomorrow. So have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the Tuesday show where your optimal life awaits.